morning and welcome back to my channel i'm jim of the youtube channel jb wonders greetings internet yeah that is delicious it's good isn't it yeah oh. you better get this back off me before I bet, I'm I bet, up, mate. yeah i better <laughs> <laughs> if i can taste that that screams legitimacy from chiang mai kind of get that mustard green in there pickled mustard green uh, shallots and some lime that my friend that's a top dish top 10 i've had it's one of the better ones i've had honestly thai food comes in all sorts of shapes forms and sizes and flavors from southern food to northern food to central food to isan food now in today's video i really want to introduce you to what i would call a thai institution a middle class institution in thailand it's one of thai people's favorite food and beverage brands and in today's video we're going to go and meet gary butler the roman cook and he's brought along his friend chai travel i'm really interested in getting their opinion here today i'm going to film this video today in my favorite park in bangkok rama nine park i used to live very close to this place for this is where the restaurant lies join us he's running away hmm. just wanted to pet it when visiting Thailand, many Westerners and many foreign visitors in general get stuck straight into the street food. They go around the markets and eat everything they can. And every now and then they'll treat themselves maybe to a, a nice Western restaurant or some fast food. But how many times do you think they actually go to the Thai institutions, the middle class institutions? Well, today I'm going to tell you about one such place. I'm going to tell you the name. And those of you who have been here for a little while, not too long, are going to go... It's not proper Thai food, it's not proper Thai food. Well, 60 million Thai people would beg to differ. It's a place where every Wednesday the bakery section do a buy one, get one free, and you can see all the old grannies and housewives and everyone else lining up in every single shopping mall in Thailand. Now, the place that I'm talking about is S and P. It started out in 1973 on Soy Prasan Mit on Wit. Uh, sort of wheat now, Sukum Wit Soy 23, and it was an ice cream parlor and a snack place. Um, soon after, it developed its bakery branch and grew really, really quick. I mean, today it's got 470 outlets in Thailand and overseas. And over the decades, it became really famous um, for made to order cakes for birthday treats or, or any other kind of celebration. And indeed, they were the first people in Thailand to make cartoon cakes. And still today, it's probably uh, the most ordered, uh, it's the number one business for made to order cakes in Thailand. Now, the bakery section lasted for years and that's, that's the side of things that, you know, I'm not massively keen on. It's okay for a quick snack. You can grab a nice juice, you can grab a cake or a sandwich on your way past. What I'm interested today in is the restaurant side of things because as I said, a lot of people will go, it's not real, not real Thai food, but you know what, for, for families that, Thai families that have treated themselves there for many, many decades now, it really is, it's the real deal, it's accepted by Thai people. I will say this though, every time I suggest getting it or getting it delivered on grab to my son, he goes, it's old people's food, but when he's not there, me and the missus will order it all the time. And I've got a couple of favorites there, which you would say they're not, oh, it's not Thai food, it's, it's not that spicy, it's not. But they do pretty much everything. Anyway, enough waffle, you'll see. Interesting. I'm interested to see what Gary thinks actually because he is uh, an aficionado on, uh, on Thai food in general, street food, market food, but not just street food and market food. A nice big lake for your pedalos and there's our destination right there behind those pedalos. There is the best S&P in the country in my opinion because the balcony looks over this lake. This is my S&P restaurant of choice. It's located right in the middle of my favorite park in Bangkok, Ramanine Park. And it's right next to the lake, as you can see. Beautiful cafe with a lovely terrace. That's where they're going, if they make it on time. They're running a bit late, so we'll be pushed, but we should be all right. I've just got to get somewhere by 12.15, 12.20, so kind of my fault. Look at this view. Beautiful, birds singing. There's something in my mouth before I start talking nonsense to your camera. <laughs> Go on then. 
All right. Eat something, man. So let's see. I've, I don't eat in S and P much. I've got to be honest, but I have eaten in here before, obviously. If I'm going to eat in a cafe, this is the sort of dish I'm going to get right because I feel like how crook that be lends itself to uh, like being cooked or being made in this setting. Sometimes you get it on the street. It's not great. Um, it's because it's a bit hot and it's like, it just gets a bit sweaty and all the ingredients are a bit like shriveled up. But when you get it in a nice cafe, decent shrimp paste, it's usually good. So I'm going to mix all mine up together because I don't, uh, I want all those flavours. The omelette, the green mango, sour green mango shallots. It's got extra chilies. She still didn't give me extra, I don't think, but and dry shrimp. This is the Gary Butler special, all the chilies into the dish. Yeah, it's bang on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. The thing you've got to use here is good shrimp paste and they've used good shrimp paste. So obviously they get probably buy their shrimp paste in bulk, so they probably get it at a really good price. How does that compare to a good market or street or a, a restaurant near you? Yeah, yeah. It's tough. I would, I would come back. This is what I would order every time I come in here. Okay. Sweet from the port, salty, spicy. They've given me a lot of chilies. I did ask for a lot of chilies. Just a perfect dish. And actually, this you don't always get these, um, the dried shrimp. And when mm. you do, a lot of the time, uh, they're not always deep fried, so they're a little bit chewy, but these have been fried to crispy perfection. They're like a salty little bit of bacon as we'd have in uh, nice. in the west so that my friend that's our top dish definitely get some of that green mango that's it mm. Mm. yeah it's delicious it's good isn't it yeah oh the, the shrimp base is very dead like in your face yeah. in your face i like it have you tried that before chai i think i have but yeah, it's been a while ago. You know, we've been eating uh, on markets and uh, a lot. But uh, mm. yeah, this is good stuff. And I never really thought of eating at S and P. I was just getting coffee at S and P, uh, and that's it. But yeah, this is actually good food. I'm also excited about the cow soy, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, uh, you can, uh, <laughs> I must admit, I don't go to the bakery. I'm not a massive fan of the bakery here. Yeah. I just okay, go classic tie in at the bakery. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Let me just. I want to make one more point about yes. the price. So obviously. Like the green curry is like 230 baht, so it's a bit more than you're going to be paying like on the street for sure. This dish, 168 or something random like that in here. But as I said to JB off camera, the places I usually eat this dish, it's usually going to range between sort of cheapest is like probably 90 bar to 150, 180 bar anyway. So for me, this isn't much, this is not a price increase. So mm. that what I want this. This is like my go-to dish if I'm in a cafe. So if I'm in somewhere Thai, but it's a cafe and they sell this, I'm usually gonna go for this. So for me, perfect. And look at the surroundings in this one. Is this the original? No, no. it's not the original, but I'd say this this has gotta be their, their flagship, no? It should be. You know. Top 10 I've had. It's one of the better ones I've had, honestly. It's a very, very good dish. It's not a dish you can really mess up. The only way you can mess it up is using really bad quality shrimp paste or just like too much or too little and it's a bit imbalanced. Right. Or messing the rice up so it's all stuck together but they haven't done either of that. So, and the crispy shrimp that you don't always get, perfect. Much better actually. There's a really famous one near Khao San Road on Pa Tit Road. Like really famous. Mark Wiens went there, super famous. I went there in a the video. It was okay. It wasn't the best. This is on like another level to that. So if you like that one then it's high praise indeed, mate. Right, okay, we've got Chai here, who's actually a native at the moment of Chiang Mai, right? Well, I wouldn't call myself native, but I uh, spent quite a bit of time there, yeah. and I love my khao soy. Mm. I have been overeating a little bit. I had a little bit of a break, but now uh, I'm ready for, uh, you know, it's been a few months now. Yeah. And I had, I had already a little bit of a taste of the soup, and you're gonna, you wanna kind of get that mustard green in there, pickled mustard green, uh, shallots, and some lime and 
the soup itself is quite sweet. This chili, okay, Gary, you can probably tell a little bit about the chili as well. What's 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 the story about the chili? This is not just normal chili flakes. Well, I'm. He's put me on the spot there. Blending it in. So it's just basically dried chili, and they've just roasted it in a pan with uh, with oil. So gives it kind of a little bit more of like a smoky taste. Spicy, very, very <laughs> spicy. Oh. So the soup itself is already actually already quite spicy. It's a coconut coconut curry based soup with crispy noodles, chicken. Uh, if you don't know cow soy, got to do the spoon test. You've just done the spoon test on the chicken. That's falling apart. Oh yeah, yeah, there mm. you go. Mm. Yeah, the mm. chunks. That's just beautiful. No effort. Knife through butter. It's a winner. I don't yeah. really like to to eat. That's why I went for cow soy. I normally don't do this outside of Chiang Mai. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Because I'm normally disappointed and this is actually a very good, a very good cow soy. Good. Yeah. Surprisingly actually at SNP. What do you got? It's my favourite. I don't know what this is inside. It's um Kay Kon. Kay Kon. Kay Kon. Soft omelette, I think. It's yeah, Kay soft omelette with little shrimps or prawns with bird's eye chilies, cloves of garlic, and a bit of rice. Bosh. There you go. I'll let you, I'll let you guys have a go. Oh, yeah. I'm interested to it see. Looks, it looks. This is one of my comfort foods, honestly. I don't think I ever had oh. it. You probably know it, eh, Gary? Yeah. You've got to get a bit of garlic in. Well, I don't have the whole chilies on their own, but Gary might. <laughs> <laughs> I normally just eat the garlic and the prawns, man. I, I get like the chilies. I get Can I have the, your chilies? Yeah. I get this and chicken and cashew kind of just go all in, wow. you know? Bad Jimmy, it's not bad mate. No, no. There's a flavour and I can't. I'm struggling to put my. I'm struggling to put my finger on what it is. Now I'm screwing my face up, but that's because I'm trying to work out what it is, <laughs> not because of the flavour. It's very, very nice actually. You're right. Pure comfort food. Yeah. You better get this back off me before I bet, I I bet, up, yeah, I better. <laughs> oh yes. Sorry, Jim. Years ago, what I actually used to do with this, mate, what I used to do with this, all cashew nuts, I used to order plate chips, and then I'd order chicken and cashew nuts, all this, and get it put on top. Oh, really? Every time the waitress would say, what are you doing? What are you doing with that? Can I say, I've drunk it, but can I just say, though, my pal Ban, the, what do you call that? Uh, uh, Coconut uh, smoothie. Yeah, kind of, but kind of they call it like frappe. 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 Yeah, yeah, frappe, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very good, top. Do you know what else is really good here, chaps? I mean, really good. And you'll turn your face up at this, is the puddings, the, the traditional Thai puddings, coconut milk based. There's a few they do. I don't think they do the tapioca, maybe they do. But the banana they do is incredible. And it's banana that they, it's green banana that they steam Ooh. until it's soft. And then the texture's incredible, mate, honestly. Maybe we'll get one of them on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Try's right, you know. This is actually my, my worst favourite cow soy. Yeah. This and... From SN, SMB? Huh. This and... A Lady of Taste? Oh, what's the other one? The, fa <laughs> the famous one in Ari. I did a video at. Okay. Uh, oh, it's really famous. The name has escaped me, but... This one's better than that. This is decent, you know. <laughs> like, it is actually decent. Because like too many times yeah. in Bangkok, you get cow soy and it, it's just sickly sweet, thick and just got like generic curry powder mm. in it whereas this is actually decent and taste the black cardamom which is like for me if i can taste that that screams legitimacy from chiang mai do you know what <coughs> your eloquence has no bounds at the moment mate i like that that's that's, that's good wordplay Thank mate you. i like that <laughs> <laughs> i like that it wasn't a word i was trying to say i don't remember but it sounded good <laughs> nothing compared to any the that the worst one in Chiang Mai. Oh, no, it's the worst. No, 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 I wouldn't agree with you there. I've had some really bad ones in Chiang Mai. Actually, any of the actual like cow soy in a cow soy shop? Yeah, yeah. Any of the but any of the like established cow soy shops in, in Chiang Mai are on another level to anything you get in Bangkok. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, right? Like so much so that like you can go to the best one in Bangkok and then you think it's good and then you go to the one in Chiang Mai. Yeah. That's the round. No, but I mean, I've just had like the yeah, occasional bad one, but yeah, I yeah, yeah. Well, it's just like, I don't know, 
the chicken is good though. I gotta be honest with you. The chicken is falling apart, like you say. Yeah, yeah. It's actually really tender. And, and now, my real opinion, it is delicious. But as I, I am always at, I'm, I'm actually always having this issue with cow soy, eating it outside. If you're not eating it in a cow soy shop, it doesn't really matter if it's actually in Chiang Mai or in the north. It can also be somewhere in, in, in the center of Thailand. If it's actually a cow soy shop, it's good. And this is not specialized for mm, cow soy. Sure. And you can taste that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? But no bad words about SP, especially not about this cow soy because it is delicious. But yeah, like yeah. everywhere else, I eat. You're in this specialized place. It's like if yeah. you go and get yeah. like a noodle soup. If we're getting a noodle soup in here, it's not going to compare to the yeah. shop that we go to down the road. He's yeah. right, but what I'm, my point was looking at it from a from a Bangkok point of view, mm. like they're typically very, very sweet and very, very thick and like just not great. But even, I just said to try them. If you go to the best, like what I'd say was the best khao soy mm. in Bangkok, then you go to Chiang Mai and go to like khao soy mei mei ni or khao soy kun yai or something, you soon realise that you're not eating anything close, like it's like on, the, on another level. Mm. Um, My point is that with somewhere like this, yeah. I think that every single dish, I'm sure you can find a better place. Yeah. Most of them. Right, back in the car, just ran here, I've just done a quick chat with Chai on Hopefully that will go on his channel. Lovely bit of lunch, didn't have much time. They were a bit late, simply because of Bangkok traffic. And I've actually got to go and pick up my son, back from army, and then I'm off to play golf in this heat wave. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did enjoy that video, or if you do like that kind of content, let me, do, let me know and I'll chuck in a few foodie type vlogs every now and then. Not said this for about six months. If you are watching this and you haven't subscribed, it's free. Subscribe down below and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. This guy's saying, oh, I'm gonna pick you up. What time are you? 8.15. 8.15, can you walk about 15, 20 minutes to my car because I'm parked somewhere else. Totally on the other side. Come on a second, I'll come past, uh, I'll come past uh, Fortune Town, yeah? So I'm off the freeway, come past Fortune Town. The sat nav's telling me to go under the underpass yet. Right. But I'm going, I'm sure the city center of a tea station is on the underpass yet. Yeah. So I'm like, last minute decides to follow the sat nav, I go under the underpass, then I'm just going past the MRT, so then I have to pull up 15 minutes down the road and then. This place is remarkable. I've just been to Kanchanaburi and my son's just done his army. Final raw door camp there. And I've never seen a browner, dustier, or drier place. Step into Ramanine Park, my friends, where they have literally hundreds and hundreds of employees who keep this beautiful every day. After all, this park is named after Ramanine, and the road outside is called Chalam Prakyat Rogao, which means glory to the king, Ramanine. Everyone has their own opinions, but for me, my favourite parks in Bangkok. Number one, Ramanine Park. Number two is right next door and it's actually the National Water Sports Centre. It's called Long Bon. I'll show you that in the next video. Um, number three, probably the prison park. Forgot what it's called. Rom, Romianinan, something like that. Four, Saran Rom. I can't go five. I would give it to Lumpini, but haven't been to the new forest park yet. I suspect that's going to go a little bit higher but it's too downtown for me too much concrete and shit anyway i can hear a squirrel this is the english garden we used to come here a lot when jacob was little a lot of picnics and whatnot i lived in this area from late 2009 until the end of 2015 so six years and this part's massive absolutely humongous and honestly, if anyone's watching this that hasn't been here or maybe they've just been to Lumpini Park, which is nice in its own right, you should get yourself out here if you like parks. <laughs> this is the spot.
Jubbly. <laughs> Leave my camera. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Not clever. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a nice day. And you, have a nice day. <laughs>